Good morning. I hope you're breaking away from watching TV. Um, I, I have no clue if things have been decided yet. Spoiler alert, uh, I've been in the office since 8 o'clock, so when I left home there were still six states, I think, that they're up in the air that, depending on how they fall, will decide the election. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, really, I think the again, as I've been preaching, is no matter no matter which way it goes, remember who sits upon the throne. Uh, and that's what we've got to be reminded. Oh, and by the way, yes, uh, this week and the next two weeks, because of where we are in the church here, uh, how fitting. These are end-of-the-world texts. Um, <laughs> after yesterday, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Uh, but, but, what, what a beautiful time for that, with all the disruption that we've got, been going through this year, with all the disruption of the election, that we get into the time of the year that it's the end of the world text to remind us of who still sits upon the throne. And, and, and we need to be reminded of that, no matter who wins. Who still sits upon the throne? More uh, importantly, where is your throne? Well, well, and, <laughs> well, and, and, and right, right, you know, or who sits upon the throne that you've established? You yeah, go. well, and, and and it fits the questions that I'm I'm going to be uh, a asking today. It really shapes the sermon, uh, and and I will be asking them in the sermon. Uh, there are three questions. The first question will cover the first text that we look at. The second question will cover the next two texts, and the last question will cover the last text uh, as we move through these. So uh, I will point those out as we move along. Um, and, and it's very interesting, again, Jack, Jack with, boy, I'm surprised. You put the sermon text second. Uh, yes, Amos is the sermon text, and it is second. I mean, that's, I don't know if I've ever put it that early. Usually it's third or fourth. Um, no, you haven't, and that's that kind of confused me. But yeah. the way it goes together, it, it, it's it's the flow of it, and and it, and really the questions were the things that that uh, shaped it, uh, the flow of how we're how we're entertaining it. But it shapes the flow of the sermon. Uh, do you have anything to say before we get going with prayer? Um, <laughs> just pray for all of us. Uh, this crazy time. Right, right. Oh. Let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this word. We thank you for these this time of this uh, of the church year uh, because it helps us to refocus uh, truly that you are the one who sits upon the throne. And as we worship the Lamb uh, who shed his blood for us, that uh, we need to have lamps that are trimmed uh, ready and prepared for that which you call us to do and to be as church, and then as church living out as citizens uh, and as uh, parents and as uh, spouses and everything else that, that we do in our, in our daily living. So guide us and lead us in our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first text is our epistle text, First, Th first Thessalonians 4. <laughs> 13 to 18, a great text for a funeral. And I, I've used this one. Uh, and this is a typical uh, funeral text. Uh, this is also one of those texts that I use uh, to explain what we know about heaven. Yeah. Uh, because again, uh, most of our, and, and even here, our description of heaven is upon Christ's return. Not not heaven, what is heaven like now? We don't know. We don't know what heaven is like We don't know. Like we, we got a glimpse of that last Sunday with, you know, those, those who are coming out of the Great Tribulation. We know it's a present tense, so we, we know the ranks are being added to, but that, again, that's a future vis vision. Right. So we know that they're being added to, but we don't know exactly how that plays out. But this one is a great vision. This is the one where um, we would take our theology of the rapture, yes, Lutherans do believe in the rapture, oh, yeah. but not the way that many church bodies do. Um, the it, rapture is the end. Correct. <laughs> the beginning of it, it's, it's not, okay, now there's a thousand year period. No, no we are in the thousand year period. So uh, the question, though, before we read the text, the question is, who are you waiting for? I, 
I think this will answer yeah. in, in the text. But the question is, who are you waiting for? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. You want to go first? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and as we read this text, I, we, we, we read the word asleep. And, I, and it kind of brought back, I, I watched a, a movie on Netflix, uh, The Gospel of John. Okay. And when it got into Naz or, uh, Lazarus, you know, and, and being asleep, you know, Jesus says, no, this sleep is not of this kind of, you know. And I was like, okay, well, this is different than, than that, you know, in the sense that when we're asleep now, we're, we'll be sleeping until Christ returns, you know. and Whatever that means. Whatever that means. Because it's not... It, it, but I think they use that term because that's the best way that to describe it that we can get a sense of it. Because sleep is restful for us. Right. Well. <laughs> for some. <laughs> Maybe right. for some. First Thessalonians. <laughs> but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus God will bring us with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of a command, with the voice of the archangel, and the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then... We who are alive and who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Uh, just a very interesting text. Uh, we who are alive and who are left until the coming of the Lord. You know, there was a misconception in that reading because people thought at that time that the Lord was going to return any day. Some of them, some of them already thought he had, and they missed it. And they missed it, right? Yeah, and and, and that and that's why they, he start he starts the, it the way he does. I don't want you to be uninformed, uninformed. because because the, some of them were worried that they missed it, or he's coming tomorrow, and I don't you know right. don't need to worry about what's going to happen today. I don't need to take care of things because Christ is coming tomorrow, and I don't need to worry about these earthly things or. Oh, that plays out in, in the sermon text. Oh, okay. So, okay. I that, mean, we, we've got some of those things going on in this text, and it's like, well, let's not be uninformed, because when Jesus comes, we're going to know it. Right. We're going to know it. And realize Jesus is still coming. He has not come. Right. And, and that gets into some of that theology that some believe that he's going to come secretly and, 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 Rapture the people, and you know the yeah. bump, the bumper sticker. If 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 the if, if this car is empty, I've been raptured. I've been raptured. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, no. 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 Uh, uh, autopilot better be able to take over. Right? Well, they make those cars now. Uh, yeah, yeah, they do. And 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 again, he he doesn't dwell on that. He he just wants to say, hey, time out here. Uh, don't be listening and don't fret. Christ is still coming, and, and, and then he, he creates the basis for what he speaks next. Since we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Uh, uh, you can't state it any more simpler than that. No, I mean, that's... Since we believe Jesus, and, and that's why I asked the question, who are you waiting for? He, he's basing it purely on one thing. Since we believe that Jesus died and rose, and rose again. again. That's it. I mean, the bottom line. You know, and physical death, you know, it's kind of hard uh, for us to, you know, I heard a lot of people say, you know, they've lost a spouse or a brother, you know, or somebody, and they say, well, I can't wait to see him again in heaven. Well, you know, maybe, but more importantly, I'm not going to, now, I didn't have a brother or sister, but I've got parents and I've got loved ones that, you know, that have gone. And, yes, I would love to see that they are there. 
But the important thing is not that I'm going to be reunited with them. I'm going to be who's, with Christ. Who's, who's, the the center, who's the center of this text? Jesus. I mean, how many times has it come up since we believe that Jesus died and rose again? Uh, uh, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Yeah. Um, uh, and Caught up together with them. But right, to right. Meet, meet the, the Lord, Lord in the air. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, right. I and mean, we that's, had, that's we the had, focus. And we had this discussion on Pastor Napine a few weeks back in, in my group, uh, worried about whether lo they'll see loved ones there or not. It's like, that's not the focus. It, 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 it's, we're going to be with the Lord. You know, to meet the Lord, I mean. Right. You know. I mean, that's the divine order of things, yeah. the way it's going to happen. You know, the dead in Christ will rise, and we will be meet them, in, you know. And, I, and I'm glad you said that. Be, uh, you mentioned the dead in Christ. All the other references are those who are asleep. That's the only time that dead is mentioned here. Yes. And, and, and he qualifies it. Yes. The dead in Christ. In Christ. Will uh, rise first. And these who are alive, we, who, those who are alive, and then we, excuse me, not those, because that clarifies again, believers. Then we, you know, who are alive and right. are left will be caught up together with them. But when you die, now you're one of the ones who have fallen asleep. <laughs> yeah, well, instantaneously, right? Well, and, and, and that, yeah. well, and it was like what, what I was preaching last Sunday with that All Saints text is John got two visions. One of the 144,000 and one of the ones that couldn't be numbered. One was the vision of those who are alive, those, right. and the other one is the vision of those who have fallen asleep. Fallen asleep. So, yeah. Right, right. So, yeah, it's just... And, and so, yeah, and, and as you said, we're going to know. A cry of command, and you and I talked about that. You didn't like that word cry. I did. You, you wanted, because some of them translate it shout. It's actually trout. Most of the translation I looked at had shout. Yeah, yeah. You know, but ESV, again, went off in a different direction. It's, same, it's the same word. Right, and what I, was ex what, I, uh, what I was explaining to Jack was, is that sense of cry is that, oh, it, it's, it's Jesus when he went to the cross, was going to the cross, he cried out, oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, how I weep for you, how I mourn for you. Right. It, it, th there's that longing that he knows that uh, they are about ready to be handed over to despair. And, and, and Christ's heart, even in the last moments, bleeds yeah. for the unbeliever. unbeliever. And, and, and so what I was telling to Jack is this is really a progression, the three things that are there, a cry of command, which is that, but then the, the voice of the archangel, which... Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. I can't imagine what a archangel's voice is going to sound like. And then the sound of the trumpet of God, that's going to even yeah, be louder yeah, than yeah, that. That's going to be, yeah. So, so there's a progression there. Uh, and yes, those who are asleep, they won't be able to be asleep. And it, it's sort of like your, alarm, up, right? it's like your alarm in the morning. It's just like, okay, I'm getting up. <laughs> I'm getting up. No option here, right? Oh. But yeah, uh, uh, and and again, he says in 18, therefore encourage one another with these words. Because again, as it starts, you know, there was some misinformation out there that Christ had already come and they missed it. And he said, no, he has not come. You'll know when he comes. And if you, if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, you are in Christ. You're, you're in Christ. And that's... And that's the key, being in Christ. We who are alive or those who are dead, it's still with Christ or in Christ. Correct. Yeah. You got anything else? That, I'm good with that. Oh, okay. Go ahead. So now we move to the sermon text, Amos 5, 18 to 24. Amos 5, 18 to 24. And remember, there's a different, you know, the, the first question was, who are you waiting for? And obviously, right. as we mentioned, Jesus. Right. Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's not about my loved ones or my grandmother or okay. this person. No, it's about Jesus. Who are you waiting for? Jesus. Now, this is how are you waiting? Both this text and the next text, how are you waiting? 
this is sort of the negative view. Yeah, it kind of starts out with whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> a little negativity there. Yeah, and as I was telling Jack, the only gospel in this verse is in the last. In this text is in the last verse. Right. Uh, this is a very law hammered text. Uh, so this is really the negative view. The next one is going to be more of the positive view, slightly. Right. You know, we'll, we'll get into it. Um, but even with the last verse, it's the good news, but it's also the judgment. Well, right. And, and, and we'll, 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 hold on. Hold on. It's the two-edged sword. Save, save some of those bullets. <laughs> save some of those bullets. Don't fire your bullets too soon. Uh, come Don't on, fire uh, your bullets too soon. Uh, you you got to wait until you see the white of their eyes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so Amos 5, verses 18 to 24. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. That... Yeah, I mean, yeah. I desire the day of the Lord, so... In a way... Yeah, and, and we'll get into that. Yeah. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light. As if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, <laughs> or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, and the peace offerings of your fat and animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs, to the melody of your harps I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-rolling stream. This really flies in the face of my sermon text last Sunday, because we we are waiting for the day of the Lord. Come, Lord, as I ended well, the we say. I ended the sermon. Come, Lord Jesus, we want we want Jesus to come. And then you get this woe to you. There's a reason why, and, and this is really yeah. the question uh, of. How are you waiting? Right. Because these people think they're waiting correctly, but they're not. They're not. You know, this is the nation of Israel prior to going into exile, as I understand it. You know, and, and God's telling them, hey, it's coming. It's coming. I'm tired of you living it your way and misinterpreting my words and my commands to where you're comfortable with them. Yeah. You know, and that kind of like, you know, why would you have it? Don't you get it? Don't you know? <laughs> it's not good judgment, you know. Well, for them. For them, <laughs> right, right, because because they have, they're, they're doing, I, I, the best way to say it is they're doing all the right things, but for the wrong reasons. It, it's not their heart. Right. It's not, well, well it, and you laugh. You laugh, and and you should laugh. Verse nineteen. Oh, I I got the biggest kick. I you mean, you 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 gotta you gotta understand verse nineteen. It, it's sort of like an Aesop fable, <laughs> in, in in one word. You yeah. know, if a man fled from a lion, and a bear met him, it'd be like, oops. <laughs> and, and you 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 think you've gotten out of well. The one commentator I read uh, uh, compared it to Wiley e. Coyote and the Roadrunner, yeah, where, right. where where Wiley e. Coyote was up on the cliff and and there'd be the big boulder and he he's he's, he's taking the the board to try to get the big boulder to fall on uh, the Roadrunner and, and what ends up happening is uh, the the board springs him over the cliff and he crashes onto the ground and the Roadrunner stops him and beep beep and goes on by and, and then the rock. And, th and then two seconds later here comes a big old boulder on top of him you know it, 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 it was like he, he he fled from the lion and then a bear met him do we dare relate this to today's election you know i mean i, I just you know well well i don't know how it's gonna go well and 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 yeah. and i and i think the reality of it is 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 there is there a perfect candidate? There is not, you know. And and, and, and so, you know, when you when you say, Oh, I'm voting for this person because he's he's the right candidate. Well uh, for years I have voted for the better of the 
worst. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it, you just got to pick the one that's right. And then, and then I think about all the things that are going to happen, you know, with the riots and all this stuff that's going to go right, on. Right. And I look at this and I'm going, you know, we're in the middle of this election. It's not decided. You know, fled, fled from a lion to met a bear, went into a house against the wall. and Sort of, but lean his head. head and I got right. in here. I'm out. And boom, right? Right. I mean, no right. matter where we go, no matter what we do. This earth, this world is going to be upside down until Christ comes. Right. And, right. And, 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 well, and the reality of it is, is, you know, he's telling this about their eternity. This is, the, yes. The, the, they're doing all the things they can do to flee from the lion. Yeah. To, to, thinking they're doing the right things, because look at me. I did it. You know, I'm, 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 I'm yeah. well, and, and we get into it. I'm, I'm, I'm obeying the feasts. I'm, a, I'm I'm bringing my sacrifices. I'm, yes. I'm going to the temple, or, or if we put it in today's language, you know, I go to church. Uh, you know, I, I'm 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 not cussing. Uh, I, I I'm and and it's like oh, and again, I it think it goes right back to Cain and Abel. Okay, go ahead. He did the offering. He brought it, but his heart wasn't in it. Right. Right, his heart wasn't in it. You know, if your heart's not in it, it's just a clanging gong. Well, and 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 I would I would say a, a look, and, and this plays into how the heart. You know, again, how are you waiting? This this is that the heart can't be in it unless the heart has been transformed. Correct. Yeah, and I and I think that's the key. Um, the the heart has to be transformed, oh, and oh knowing that Jesus died and rose again, that transforms the heart, going back to the last text. And this is where, you know, and, and basically, folks, some of you might have said this, well, God doesn't hate. Uh, yeah, he does. Yes. This text says, I hate, I despise, I take no delight, I will not accept, I will not look upon, Take away from me the noise of your songs. Yeah, that, that's God talking. That's God sharing with us that, yes, you're doing the right things. You're doing the way, the, you're doing the things that I have prescribed for you, but you're doing them the wrong way because it's not, It's just you, you haven't been transformed in your doing of them. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's you're checking off a list. Is, is it head knowledge? Yeah. Or is it sincerity? Yeah. And that and that's where verse twenty four comes in. And that's why this. The, it, that's why twenty four is the key verse in this text. And that's the two edged sword here. I was right. talking about because it's good and it's not so good. It depends who's receiving it. Well, it's 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 that it's that it's you that know. sense of is the law good or bad. Yes. You know, uh, you know, I mean, we want justice and we want vengeance and we, you know, and we, but unfortunately we want it now. We want it our way. Okay. But God says, no, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And here, guess what? And oh yeah, by the way, justice is the Lord's yeah. also. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I was explaining to Jack as I was doing, uh, reading commentaries on this, um, I couldn't find a commentary that he and I both have the same view of this of this verse. Is that really the first half is the law, the second half is the gospel. Law is the justice rolling down like waters is that law that right. hears in our as we hear it in our ears that convicts us of our sin. We need the waters of baptism. We need that. The waters of baptism that drown us. We need that law to kill. Right. So that then we are brought to life, and that life is the robes of righteousness of Christ. That then both of them act like water. One is the water that kills the drowning flood, and the other one is the refreshing waters. Oh, as as the good shepherd takes us by the still waters, which refresh us. Yeah. So water can do both things. So that's really what's playing out here. And most of the commentators didn't take it that way. They took it both as as a, a positive thing. 
I agree with you, ladies. I, I think Pastor is a little more excited this morning <laughs> than normal. <laughs> and I that's can't, okay. I can't help it. That's okay. I can't help it. These texts. Yeah, I mean, it's just are. like it's, it's just like last Sunday. Uh, you know, when you see these texts, and and especially as we've gone through this year, huh. the hopefulness of these texts. Uh, for I the, mean, for us, it's great. It's a hope. It's Right, but on the other end of that, it, it says to me, there is an urgency for me to go out and reach these people that are superficially thinking they're following the Lord. Right, and 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 that's the sense of the righteousness, like an ever flowing stream, uh, is as as the righteousness has been poured onto me, it's got to flow out of me. You know, I mean, does Satan have them fooled? Or are they really that shallow, you know? Oh, and, we're going to get into that in the gospel you text. Know, and then, you know, I mean, and then we talk about the fool, you know, the definition of the fool, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, so, so uh, uh, again, this, this is the negative example of how are you waiting? And, and again, no, no, notice the thing here isn't a difference between believer and unbeliever. These are believers, Yes. These are believers. The ones, they think they are. Right. They, they, they're doing all the practices. They're, they're, they're doing the things that have been prescribed by God, but there's something not quite right. Yeah. And, and so how are you waiting? So, again, that's where, the, that's where the judgment, that's where the justice needs to be poured out on them to wake them up. Oh, wake them up. Oh, wake up. Meet them in the meet them in the air. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we move to Psalm seventy. Uh, unless you had something. No, there. no, that's okay. good. Psalm Psalm seventy. So same question. How are you waiting? This one starts off a little negatively, but this is because the justice has been poured out. Has been poured out. Yes. The justice has been poured out. They realize. Oh. A.K.A. Amos, you told us, and then we've gone through it, and now we're in it. And, you know, one of the things about this psalm, it's very similar, uh, if you all went up later on, uh, take a look at uh, Psalm 40, verses 13 through 17, are very similar to, talk, to this, this text that we have for today. Uh, very similar. Um, yeah. Okay, Psalm 70, uh, we'll start at verse 1. Uh, are you going to read the whole psalm? I, I or, thought maybe or, I just do verse 5. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just a, uh, you see how, you know, he's a little excited, he's a little loud, and he just can't wait to take a dig. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's okay, exactly. because in the joy of the Lord, you can enjoy sharing his word. Make haste, O God, to deliver me, O Lord. Make haste to help me. Let them be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let them be turned back and brought to dishonor who delight in my hurt. Let them turn back because of their shame and who say, Aha! May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not delay. And and really, as we look at this, we really have to look at the first two verses because verse three is a shift. It, it flips it all the way around. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yep. You know, I mean, I, I put this on uh, Facebook as well, but you know, the, the, in uh, the psalm here, you know, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How to hide your face from me, you know. That comes out of Psalm 13, 1. It's very, you know, mm -hmm. that pulls that back in. Uh, Psalm 31, my times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies mm -hmm. and from my, per you know, the, these cries in the Psalms, you know. Right. Uh, and, and that brings in, uh, you know, if, if, we, if we look at our, our Matins service, okay, that I was wondering in. if you were going to bring that up. I, yeah, I yeah. mean, that definitely ties that in. And I love matins. I mean, I can just do matins every morning. Make haste, oh God, to for me. <laughs> Make haste to help me, me oh Lord. Lord. <laughs> you know? Yep. See, we can sing together. <laughs> and, and actually, we're going to do that as our opening. We're not going to do the chanting, but we're going to do the, the that as a response, as a response. In, in, in our opening sentences you for know? worship on Sunday. You know, I mean... Yeah. 
you know, in, you know, we're looking for God to do it now, do it here and now. We want that intervention. Uh, we're, we're and, trying, and, yeah. and, and why not? I mean, and, and again, I keep hearkening back to this. I can't wait till 2021. Then I have new stuff to talk about. <laughs> Talking about 2020, it's so easy. It's so easy that this this psalm. You know, originally, I was going to preach on this one. Okay. Um, because because as I thought about this year, you know, how easy is it that we cry out, "Make haste to help me, O Lord, uh, deliver me from from this." We we're seeking that. Um, come, Lord Jesus. But as you say, we want them on our time. We do. You know, I mean. In a way, it seems harsh to say, Lord Jesus, you know, I mean, you know, or Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Plead this out. We cry this out. We ask for, for deliverance. And, and, and here, I mean, make haste, O God, to deliver me, you know. Uh, right. And, and, and the... are, you, are you crying for his return or are you, is it personal and private and say, well, deliver me, but the heck with the other guy. And that's what I got out of verse 2. You know? Out of verse 2, I got the same thing. It's like, you know, make haste to deliver me. Make haste to... Let them be put to shame and confusion. Uh, let them be turned... This on. It, it, it's almost that same thing, you know. And that's where I got a little unnerved with verse 2. It's like, okay, God, rescue me, but so much about the so other guy. You know? You know uh, granted... They deserve what they're getting. Well, that goes but, back but to the, the previous text. But the reality, but the reality of it is, so do I. I deserve that. Yeah, yeah. But you're right, it goes back to the last text where you know, this this is this is coming out of the justice, God's justice, justice being poured yes. out on them, and they realize the dire despair. They do. And, and the difference here is, you know, and some in, in our what the way we worship and our responses, you know, we say we, 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 uh, which sometimes I think in our, in our readings and our liturgy, it should say I mm -hmm. instead of we, right. You know, right. we confess to you, O Lord, you know, no, I confess to you, O Lord, that I am a poor, miserable sinner. Right. Uh, you know, make it, make it personal. Right. Uh, you know, because, you know, if, if you look at this, you know, Make haste to deliver me, okay? It's personal. It's right, me. Right. It's a personal cry. Uh, it's a psalm, and it's sung together, so we know it's it's more than just one pleading with the Lord. Uh, but then it says, let them turn back. <laughs> you know? It's like, I, I don't know. It, well, and, and, and we can see those differences by the way that the fruits are being born. And, and again... We've got to be careful about distinguishing in these texts. It's not believer and unbeliever. It's it's all about all the believers, and and right. and, and so we're talking believers. And and in verse two is let them again, and and this is verse three is the resolve here. Right. Let them be put to shame and confusion. Let them be turned back and brought to dishonor. Oh, let them turn back. And what's the other word for turn back? Repent. Turn Repent. Back. You know. Let let their shame, let their shame be made evident. Let your justice fall on them, so they will end up like me, saying, "Lord, I need your rescue." You know, in your Sunday mornings, you know, sometimes you get up and you say, "God is good," right? And then you know, all the time, and all the time, God is good. I think we ought to switch the last thing to all the time. God is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're having some issues. I hope it's uh I hope it's not continuing. Okay. So uh, but yeah. You know, we need to reach out and, and, and actually pray for God's direction. Mm -hmm. You know, not just, you know, yes, I am poor, needy, hasten to me, you know, you are my help right. and my deliverer. But we need to be out and be that way all the time, all the time, uh, not just here and there and now. Uh, right. You know. Well, uh, and, and, and the sense is, as as we have been broken, 
we also need to pray for the brokenness of others, that God's justice will be poured yeah. out upon them so that they can realize, because that's really his prayer here, let them turn back because of their shame. Then, verse 4, may all who seek you, because the idea of being broken, of turning back, is for them to go. And seek, I need to seek the Lord. Seek, seek the Lord. I need to seek the Lord. And, oh, rejoice in you. Oh, something about when Christ returns, we will be focused on him. him. Yeah, we'll be with others, but the focus should be right. with him. Otherwise, right. if we're looking at those around us, we might be the one in the uh, wedding reception with the wrong garment on. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and that and that becomes the sense of the question, how are you waiting? We are waiting, realizing that God's just justice has flowed and been poured out upon us to help us to realize our sinfulness and the need of a Savior. And now we need to act in righteousness towards others so that they can realize that same Savior of Jesus in Jesus Christ. So, yeah, we're, 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 we've been freezing off and on here. Okay. Little by little. It's not real bad, but it's very irritating, I'm sure. All right, we're ready to go to Matthew. We, we move on to the Gospel, Matthew 25. Uh, the next three weeks will be in Matthew 25 because we have three parables, boom, boom, oh, okay. boom. Um, and they're all parables about the kingdom will, and, and that's the key here is it, it, it's mentioned in the first one. I don't, I don't think it's mentioned anywhere else. It, so all three of them are, then the kingdom of heaven will be like. Notice it will be like, will be it, like. It, it's something come you know the, the the kingdom parables and the king right. kingdom of heaven is like so it's comparing it to how we live right now right the now. kingdom of heaven now now it's, this, this this is this is that as as we're waiting for Christ to to call us up and join him in the clouds that's that's the senses this this is the calling up in the clouds that then the kingdom of heaven will be so we will have uh, the parable of the ten virgins this week, then it's the parable of the talents next week, and then it's the parable of the sheep and the goats the following week. Yeah. Uh, boom, 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 like that. Um, you know, I told you earlier I didn't do a lot of work in, in, in getting off into the weeds about definitions, but I, I did pull off a second word. I, I just realized, foolish. It, right. When we we'll get, we'll get foolish, into that. And you, 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 if you watch the video, you, they mentioned it. Yes. The, the Greek word for it. Right. Uh, Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. There's your cry again. Yeah. There was a cry. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins. And again, remember, and, and, and... I like the number. Well, right, right. And, and again, that number of completeness. But again, the, realizing this is not believers and unbelievers. It's not, it's not the five were believers and the five were unbelievers. Right. They're all believers. They had lamps. They all have. They all have lamps, and they all have lamps with oil. They are believers. And that's really what we've got to, re, you know, because, again, that was one of the things that... Uh, 
played out for me in this was like, oh, that's right. These aren't believers and unbelievers, and they're not getting into heaven because believers. these are believers and believers. And, and there's a distinction between them. And the number 10 means the complete, so sort of the sense of the complete completeness of, of the church on earth, not the church that we saw last week, but the completeness of the church on earth, which is filled with those who believe from the heart and those who worship according to the traditions and the rules and the regulations. And that's really what played out in, See, and that's, in Amos. That's where I thought this was at when I was reading this, is that, okay, we've got the ten virgins uh, because five of them foolish and five are wise. I thought it was the ones that the five were fooling themselves because of what they thought they were. In other words, they thought they were believers. Well, the, the, and they were believers, but they thought what they were doing was right. Which, yeah, instead of, they, they've they lost them. In other words, it'd be like today, okay, I can obey the commands and do the rituals and do things, but my life is really not focused on Jesus. Right. You right. know, it's just... You know, it's focused on my works more than and, 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 my faith. And hold on to that because we got to get into the oil. Yeah, we have to get into the oil. You know, uh, and and again, the, the, you know, the word foolish. I, I was I, I was love, gonna I was just gonna ask you. I love foolish. You know, it's it's when I looked that up, it's dull or stupid or just showing a reckless lack of care or attention. Mm. Okay, showing a reckless lack of care or affection. In other words, not being sincere. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and and what do you remember what the Greek word the Greek word for that is? Uh, I didn't write that down, but I remember the movie saying that. The, the word is our word moron. Yeah, moron. That 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 word for foolish is is the in the Greek. It's our word. Moron. moron you know. They were morons. You know, it's kind of, and if we can relate that to today, that's the easiest way to relate it. Right. You know, I mean, some of these, uh, oh, by the way, you, you had mentioned about, you know, at midnight there was a cry. Yeah. That, that's not the same word. That's an outcry. Okay. Okay. Or declaration. Right. Okay. Different from the word cry as when Christ comes. So it's, yeah. But but there's Our English a, language. But, but there's 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 a that there's that same sense That's of an urgency to urgency to, going out right right, right. you know uh, right and 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 uh, again uh, how, how do how do well I'm going to let you explain the oil the oil yeah well that 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 intrigued me I I don't know what you found uh, I I found there are general generally two schools of thought for the oil. And, and and my understanding for the text is the third. The third school. <laughs> In other words, okay. I'll, I'll bite. What do you got? <laughs> the first school of thought is from Luther. Luther is says the oil is faith. Okay. Okay. He says the oil is faith. Uh, I I I I don't disagree with my. My sainted brother, uh, but I think I think it's lacking. Well, I think if you if you look at the oil as faith, then you know you either because see I have a problem with that one because you either have faith or you don't. Okay, right. It's it's not, it's and, not. and and that then makes the, them either believers or unbelievers. And we we're saying here they're all believers, right? Yeah. Right, and and that's and again that's that's where where I I have I have to take a. A deference there. Then some commentators said the oil is good works. Be and they based it on Matthew 5, four, uh, 14 and 15. Let your light shine. Well, so don't, don't hide your lamp under a bushel. Right. The thing is, I found in another commentary, that's a different word for lamp. The, See, the, I kind of like the good works the, idea. The, the, the word for lamp in, the, in Matthew 5 is different from for lamp here. Okay. So you got to pay attention to that. I missed that because I was going with the good works. But, but, but. Okay, what's the third? <laughs> the third is, and, and here, here's really the sense is, 
uh, you got to take both of those. If, if you follow James, living out your faith. If, if, if you follow okay. James, faith without good works is dead. Right. And, and because to me is the key here is the five foolish ones. Did they have oil in their lamps? They did. They did. But what didn't they have? That the second the wise ones had, they didn't have enough. They didn't have an extra flask. Okay. They they they, they weren't. And to me, that's the sense of. It's really that sense of discipleship. So they fell short I, I, I of would their say, works. I would say. I would say you need to have because again, can you just have the oil? No, you need the lamp. And, and really, the sense of the lamp here in this is a torch. So, so, so you ne you need the vessel, and you need the fluid. Okay. What's the vessel? We are the. Fluid. But if you take a look at Luther, Luther says, "What's the vessel? Faith." And now, going with what you're saying, what's the oil? Good works. Good works. So, so it's the whole discipleship process. The. As we've been saying all along, it's it's doing those things because we've been transformed in our faith, not doing them just rote. The ten virgins, they they were just going through the motions. Okay. I'm I'm ready for I'm ready for the bridegroom. I got my lamp. I got my oil. Let's go. They weren't anticipating the delay. See, I was thinking of it as good works, and then when I got into verses eight and ten, it was like, okay, too little, too late. You know, he just didn't get it. Well, and, and it's you know? and well, it's it's because it's yeah. But then then are we by our works? That that's where that well, no, that's, where, just, that's where that one falls apart. But in a sense, <laughs> but you know, I, I you got to take the. Whole I, I I look at James. Faith, you know, without works is dead. Right. Well, okay. Well, you're you're lacking. You you got the faith, but you didn't. You know, maybe you did some works. But was it you doing the work? Or was it God working through your faith and doing the work? But, but are are they shut out because they didn't have the oil? <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. You got to, yeah. and this is where you got to be. Again, this, this, again, when you start pushing on a parable too far, too I, hard, you got to, you got to be I careful. Think we're going with it a little and, bit there, but but you know, but I think the with all the other texts, it's that sense of they are both believers. The ones have been transformed by Christ, and so. They're they're gonna they're gonna be fully prepared all the time because they've been transformed. Right. The other ones are just living it out in you know in the sermon. I'm, I'm going to talk about worship performance. Okay. It, it, it it's coming and performing. It's it, it's doing. Um, there's a there's another phrase I've got. Uh, the um, the business of religion. It, it's it's doing the business of religion, okay. And and they're not ready, because because again, the business of religion will always fall short. See, I I went on well a couple of different thoughts. You know, I mean, when we get into the latter verses, you know, it's like, you know, Lord, Lord, we you know we knew you, we did this, we you know, it's like, and we talked earlier, okay, you know. Yeah, how did did he know you or did you know him? Uh, yes, they knew him. They knew him. They they knew him. They did all the right things. And that could have been just head knowledge. Um, okay. It might have, it, but again, it might have been heart knowledge at some point. But at some point, it was well, lost. Was, yeah, I mean, that, back to our because once again, saved, always saved. You know, right dilemma. Faith can't be taken away from us. But we can throw it out. We can throw it out. And and and, you know? and again, th that's that's where they thought they thought Amos, where they thought all their sacrifices and their songs and their worship, they thought all that was what was going to save them. And it didn't work. And the salvation you know? the salvation comes through the bridegroom. I did not know yeah. you. I didn't know you. Yes, you might have done all the right things. Yes, you were there. Yeah. And 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 again, I'm not going to go, but that whole sense of they had to go out and find and buy more oil. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to go there with that. How are you going to? That's that, that again. That's that that pushes it. So you know, I'm 
think that since let let's take the whole package because again that's our understanding, of faith and works. It, it's not one or the other; it, they go together. Uh, right. Uh, because again, th they I think they were trying to rely on their works. They're 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 following the prescription of, of being a good follower, uh, but. And, and we didn't even mention, all ten were drowsy, and all ten Slept. fell asleep. Yes. One, one fell asleep in the comfort of feeling like, oh, I've done all the right I'm things. Prepared. One fell asleep knowing, yeah, we may not make it. You know, it, brought, it brings up two other texts that I, that I have here in Matthew. Uh, Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. I like that, and I also like Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And I think both of those verses tie into this parable. Right, right. I mean, God's word does tie in the, you know, but I mean, specifically to what we're looking at today with the works and the faith. Right. You know, uh, it, right. It has to be together. You know. Believe in your heart and confess with your yeah. mouth. You know. If, if, uh, again, and the, uh, the, that your good works may glorify God, that they may see them. That's the confession with your mouth. Yeah. You know, so, so yeah, that, and that's why I said, I'd rather take the whole package, faith and works in there, rather than separating it out. And, and again, you'll find commentaries that'll. Oh, they, they, well, they'll, I mean, they they'll break it all with up. It. Yeah, they went with the oil, with the right. you know the light, with right. the with the virgin, with the ten and the five and the five. And, and, I mean, but the point is, is what is Jesus trying to say here? Our our you know? salvation is based on Him and Him alone. That's it. Right. You know, and don't fool yourself. Right. Don't fool yourself that certain prescriptions are going to get you into heaven. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And and you it's know, and it's that it. believing that Jesus died and rose again. Yes. Anything else? I, we're yeah, we are. I didn't we think we would. We would go over. Well, they they quieted. So you know, <laughs> they, they 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 I tamper. I tried to tamper it down a little bit. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's. Yeah, they're still having issues. a very hard time. Yeah. Well, let's close with a word of prayer, and hopefully by next week we'll clear up the issues. Once this gets posted, it should play continually. Okay. Okay. Should play. Should play continually. Bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. Uh, again, as you gather us together, as you bring us into this time of the church year, that is uh, the end. End of the calendar, so to speak, as we focus in times and the preparations you have made for us. Uh, let us rely on you fully in those things that we do to live out our faith, but also in the things that we do to live out as a citizen of, of this country. And so as uh, we continue to pay attention to the election results, uh, we pray your blessings upon it. As I said last night, uh, in my PM pause, I pray for peace. I pray for understanding. I pray for people to come together and realize that there is only one who saves, and that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So enable us to be those instruments that you use as you pour out that water upon us, that water of justice and judgment. Let it flow through us like an ever rolling stream. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I don't know if it's our recording. I've got a feeling it might be with the internet connection, but we'll, we'll I, see. I'm thinking it's more just everybody's on the internet trying to figure out, and Could it's be. bogging it down. But our recording should replay. Yeah. Well, hopefully, we'll see you next week. Let us go and serve the Lord. Right. Thanks be, be to God. God.